we kickstart 2021 with a big bang. It is the first show of the year and I say a happy new year to you all. Welcome to Talk Attainment. I am your host, Elsie. 2020 has been good for some artists, particularly some new entrants of which Kofi Jama is a part of. He had his breakthrough with the Ecosa song, which has traits of the Comerican craze. I'm sure you know the song El Coso, but how well do you know the artist that I'm talking about? Well, let's find out after this break. Don't go away. This is Talk Attainment. Assalamu alaikum to you wherever you hear this. They're trying to end me when I'm swagging at this funeral services. I start a work already. Muna mugu sushu shu permit. From now on going, no better for me, I do with street credit. When you be, I can't talk to me. Yes, I'm in penny pop. Money be the best company. Now crash it, when you be, and I will proud down for. So make I tell you once more. She can't a man cause one down for the other pair with down for. I've seen it all to talk a lot about it. So watch who you call your blood. In this garden of Eden, you better watch out for the snakes because they be creeping up. Now I hear you'll be the booba and never light bulb so why stop if the world could be yours so i'm gonna bring it down with vibe but you try picking it up grilling your mouth said the sb when you're chicken and pork who claim who gangsters when we say when you're gangster enough straight welcome back to talk attainment kofi jama is here with us kofi you're welcome thank you i like your looks it's nice i appreciate it. thank you the ecoso song actually it's easy to sing the hook is just on point. What inspired it? Well, I wanted to make an anthem that my people could relate to. And I've been doing, if you look at like through my glossary, I've been doing classic songs and all those stuff. But this was the time that I had to get jiggy. I had to get back to my roots where I came from, like Kumase. And I had to do an anthem that the streets can relate. So that, that was where I picked, like, I got my inspiration from. Do you by any chance fear becoming one of those artists who become irrelevant after releasing a hit song? Well, I don't have that fear because um, looking back at my work, I've, I've proved the point. Even without, if I have not released the Koso, I'll still get that, like, that following, that Kofi Jama following. Because I've, I've built, some, I've built a, a, a quite a fan base to uh, good music. So I believe in myself that, yeah. And a Koso is, is least of my good music, but it's just that it's a trend and it's blown up. But of course, it's not better than the song that I did with Stone Boy, which is Me Day Up. And it's not better than the song that I did with uh, Sifa Chermi. But I think it's all about, it's, it's the trend now. And it's, trend, it's trending because of the trend too. And I'll take it in good faith, but I don't think I'm under any pressure that I wouldn't be relevant even after a course. Because now people are listening back to my other songs like Me Day Up and Chermi and realizing that, yeah, I have better songs than a course. So that's how it is. Does it seem like you're promoting the Ecoso more than your other songs? Well, Ecoso blew, it blew by itself. Like, there was not much into um, the promotion. Uh, the, there was not much finance in the promotion like the previous songs. And that's how I'm saying. It's a trend and it blew because of the trend. And it's, I think it's spreading like wildfire. And we are not making some plugins that we have to make, but it's just going by itself. So he's just traveling by himself. So that's it. It's, I take it in good faith. If not for the Comerican vibe, would you have said that you would have still secured the same spotlight that you have now in the limelight? Well, I think uh, most times when a, a big uh, a big thing is about to happen, it don't it, it, it's not it, it not it don't depend on just one person. Most times it takes unity to help build a big, a big thing up like that. And the Comerican vibe is all about the unity. Even if you hear the Asaka Boys tracks, they don't do it alone. You can see it's not just one person. There are a couple of people on the same song. And it's, it, I, I feel say all artists from Kumase or Comerica helped in bringing that vibe up. They all helped in promoting that vibe in a way or another. So um, if it wasn't for the Comerican vibe, I'll still be doing music. I'll still be Kofi Jamar, but I don't know about Ecoso. But Ecoso sprang out of out from the Comerican vibe, and it's all here to promote that vibe for it to go on, like to, for it to last in the game. Speaking about unity, 
it's something that most artists complain about in the music industry yeah. let me say entertainment industry in a whole would you say that this whole American movement in a way is teaching other artists at other regions or other places in the country how to come together push one another promote one another song would you say that in a way your movement is doing that to 100 percent like it is it's putting that uh, that sense in people that unity builds a, builds up a lot. Even way back, Kumasi had uh, didn't have that kind of unity, but all they, this Kumerika came about, and people were proud. Finally, became proud from like for being associated with Kumasi and coming from that side. So that helped in like boosting people to join hands together to make this happen. Since you started the Kumerika movement. How has been, how has the response from your paysetters? When I say paysetters, I mean the likes of Achame Kwame, the likes of um, Flokin, the likes of, um, you name it. Yeah. How, how would you say they have helped or supported? Because Shata was in Kumasi to shoot a music yeah. video. Yeah. I'm not in any way trying to um, make it look as if I'm comparing, but would you say that it's something that they could have, you know, taken a step to do first, other than waiting for Shata to, you know? Well, they could have, and I think everybody got ideas at the time in their life, but sometimes it, get, it gets left with what, like, the finances and how to go about it. I think people like Ochame Kwame and all the souls had that idea. I think they might have had that idea, but maybe letting it work was the problem. And Shata is one, like one of the biggest artists in the country right now. And he had that, I think he had that uh, capacity to do it. So that's why he was able to do it. But um, the artists already in Kumasi, they are doing a little that they can do to help from their own, uh, in their own way to help. Like Floating Stone have been posting the boys since they started. I've been posting me and other ads from Kumasi, like on, on, the, on his social media page and hyping us and all the stuff. So they helped in the, in the way or the other that they can. Achame Ch Kwame too was posting some of the songs and all those stuff, and he was really happy and proud about it. So they contributed their quota, like how, what they can do. Yeah. But has he reached out to you yet? Well, he tweeted some of my songs, but Flo Ken, I'm always in contact with Flo Ken. Stone, but Oshama Kwame, he like, like I don't have a personal contact with him though. But he tweets and share my stuff most times. Yeah. Back to your song, have you thought of a remix? Yeah, I've really thought of it. What are you doing towards that? Who are some of the ads that you? We are still we are still working on it, and I, the idea is a Ghana a Ghanaian remix, a Nigerian remix, and African remix. That's the idea for now. So. We are still working on with the Ghanaian remix. It's half, it's half done, and we are still working on the other ones. Before your Ekoso song, okay, I'm sure you reached out to some of the A-list artists for a feature. What is the response now as compared to then when you approach them for a feature? Are they now willing to feature considering the fact that your song has now shot to light? Yeah, I think that's that's how people are, you know, and you can't take that away from them because they are musicians, but they are people. That's the basic thing, and people want to be associated with you when they see you up there. That's how people. That's human nature. So before then, there are some songs I don't. I I won't say that people. All people turned me down, but they come up with some excuses sometimes. But this time, the excuses are are no more. And you could tell that it's, it's people, it's human nature. So it happens, and me, I understand. Yeah, so I'm cool with it. The likes of Michael Blank Blankson, the likes of um, Pato Rankin, Wizkid, help me. Yeah, Burner um, Boy, Stormzy. Burner Boy, yeah. Stormzy, and the rest have reacted to your song. Recently, you were, you've, you were featured on BBC Radio 1, Voice of America. Yeah. You've gone international. Which other achievements don't we know apart from these ones? Well, being being a hero for my for the people back home, like my people where I'm from, Bantama, 
yeah, that's one achievement that like I always like I always like look up to, and it keeps me motivated, cause they see like I'm doing. They see that I'm. They feel that I'm doing it for them, and they use they they you they they try to uh, use me as a motivation for them to get to the top to motivate themselves. That yeah, Jamal started with us. He was just around here. He was around this corner, and look at where he is now. With all of these achievements and with your future with Shatter, would you say, would you probably hit your chest and say that, yes, I have arrived? Well, not yet for me, but plenty of people would. That's the normal because they, if they've arrived, but where, where I want to go, I've not, I've not arrived. Like, I'm still on the way, looking at where I want to go. And it's not get the fame and all that is not getting into your head. Not a second. It's just giving me pressure, and I have. To, I'm, I'm finding ways to deal with it, and still stay sane to write my music, and still stay sane to go about my music business and the whole personal life. Then, but are you looking forward to any VGMA nominees and which category? Most definitely, I'm looking forward to best international collaboration. That's my song in the city that I did with Ice Prince and Calligraph Jones. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to the uh, most popular song and best hip hop song of the year. And best collaboration, me and Stoneboy. Yeah. And what would you do if you don't get these hours? Would you get hurt? No, I wouldn't. But just being nominated would, like, <clears throat> being a validation for me. Like, yeah, I'm doing something and I got nominated for VGMAs, that will, that will really inspire me in a way. But I wouldn't get hurt if I don't grab an award, yeah. We'll take a quick breather. When we come back, we'll continue and delve more into his personal life. Don't go away. Welcome to the discovery segment on Talk Attainment. My name is Abraham Tipa and we have um, Calvin Jesse, he's a violinist. How long have you been doing this? Mm, for close to nine years. Nine years? Yeah. When did you start? When I was in high school. Really? Yeah. How, how did it begin? Uh, well, so one day I was looking through a stack of magazines and then I saw a picture of a little girl playing a violin. And I liked it so much. I, I wanted to be that person playing it. Mm. So, yeah, I tried to get one. So, yeah, one day I went to Melcom to do window shopping, and then I saw a violin. I was like, wow, yeah. So I checked the price, and then I was like, okay, I can save towards that. So when I saved and I actually got that money, I came. The violin was gone. <laughs> yeah. And so later one day, I think I'd been bugging my mom to get me a violin. And one day she just called me and said, OK, let's go and get it. Mm. Yeah. And that's when we went to get this violin. How did you learn how to play it? Yeah, so I, it was a lot of reading. I did a lot of reading and I, a lot of observation. So I had been going to the uh, National Symphony Orchestra to observe how they, they play and all that. And then the rest of it, I did it by reading. And I had also had some help. So some people help you when they see that you are playing, you are trying, and you maybe you, you can't do certain things yet. They help you with what they know. Mm. So yes, those, kind, those people also helped to improve on my play. How difficult or otherwise is it to learn the, this instrument? Well, I would say it's just like any other instrument. 
uh, every instrument has its own perks and nuances. Mm -hmm. So, but it's it's pretty difficult. The difficulty is in coordinating co a lot of coordination to get certain things. Maybe getting your right hand and your left hand to work independently and mm -hmm. also together. Mm -hmm. That that's the difficulty about it. Mm. But otherwise, it's, it's a pretty. Easy. I, I I could see you you place it under your jaw. Yeah, uh, on the shoulder. Yeah. Okay, like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I was beginning, in the beginning, yes, I felt pain. Mm -hmm. Yes, in the beginning, I felt a lot of pain. But as time went on, I think my body grew to adapt. My body adapted to it. Anything you want to tell our viewers? Follow your dreams, but do it wisely. Right, so that's Calvin Jesse, a violinist, joining us on the Discovery segment on Tokatainment. My name is Abraham Tipa. Over to you, LC. And we are back. If you just joined us, this is Talk Attainment. And I've been chit chatting with Kofi Jama. What else do you do aside music? Well, I, I, read, uh, I don't read uh, history in school, but I do a, a lot of research and all those stuff. I'm preparing for after some, after some time, I'll, I'm going to like uh, continue further my education. But for now, I, I'm, I'm just doing music because the show base is a, is a lot. What were some of the things that you weren't able to do, but because of music, you've been able to do now? Because of music, um, I'm able to feed myself now. Because first, as I completed, as I, uh, I was done with SHS, I had to do min, uh, min, some minor jobs to feed myself and all those stuff. But because of music, um, now like I feed myself through music. That's, that's like my job, my nine to five. Speaking of minor jobs, you stated in a couple of interviews that you were once a pallbearer and yeah. a security guard. Yeah. How did that happen? Well, after SHS, um, it was the same problem that parents have with their, uh, their sons for making some decisions. And I, I, I was a little bit rebellious and I didn't want to go home. I just, I, I was at a friend's house trying to pursue this music, but I also had to feed myself. So I went out to search for jobs, and I did Paul Baron. Like I was like I was signed to a funeral service. They do funeral services and all those stuff. So they serve our funerals, and they also like do the Paul Baron services and everything. So that was where I worked at first, and I moved on to the security. How difficult was it having to work in a funeral home as a Paul Baron? It was cool. Around that time, it was cool. And I love that adventure because it was the time. It was the first time that I was trying to work for myself or feed myself, and at least I was doing something that I would be paid for it. So I just did. Have you once encountered a stubborn corpse in your work as a pallbearer? Have you ever had that? Well, nah. The first time I, uh, the first time I actually wanted, like, I had a, a vic, there was a vacancy at a mortuary that I wanted to work there, but I couldn't. That was the first chance I couldn't, uh, like, I didn't even stay there for a night. So I moved on to the Paul Baron, and Paul Baron is it's a broad day. You do it in broad day, so you wouldn't encounter cops and all those stuff. Yeah, so I haven't. But you haven't set your eyes on any cops at the funeral home before? Yeah. But you have heard stories about cops having to sit down and all that. Yeah. While dressing I've them. I've heard stories. I heard it. Like, actually, the day I went, I went for that, like, that mortuary job, I heard it. I heard a lot, a lot of it. And that's one of the reasons that I didn't take it. That's one of the reasons why I didn't work there. So I moved on to the Paul Bering service. And that was cool because it was a broad day. And you just have to carry you are with a bunch of uh, you are with a bunch of guys and you had to carry so at what point did you stop well 
I had to, like, at, at some point, uh, like, I, I moved on to the security guard, so I had to stop. Because that one was, a, like, they, they were, that was a better pay than that poor bearing. So I had to stop and move on to the security guard. What would you describe as the most difficult moment in your life? Well, being a, that, around that time, being a security guard, I was really stressing most times, you know. And around that time, I was, I had a name. I had a name that I was a rapper. I was winning competitions on radio and all those stuff. And people knew me, like in Kumase. So plenty would come and see me at the gates, opening gates for people and all those stuff. And people would laugh and people would tease me and all those stuff. So I had a difficult moment around that time. But I dealt with it, so. And that, that's building me up now. Did you nearly at a point give up on your dream? Yeah, I felt it, but I never made that decision. Even though the feeling, you had that feeling that, yo, is this gonna work? All this, you have doubts and all those stuff. But I always kept the belief there. And I always rehearsed when I got time. And I loved music, so it, I really loved the music, so I couldn't just stop or pause for anything, yeah. During all these trying times in your life, did you have a girlfriend? <laughs> Whoa, that's a question. Yeah. How does she take it? How, was, how did she react? Well, I hid a lot from her. And till now, she she didn't know that I, I like she don't know that I I had to work at the poor bearing service or like mortuary and things like that. Why did you hide it from her? Because it was embarrassing, you know. It was embarrassing for me. Yeah. Why was it embarrassing for you? Because you were supposed to tell each other what you up. So wait, what did she think you were doing at that time as a job? Well, I lied to her that I was, I, I was working at a company. What kind of lady can't you resist? Intelligent one. She don't mind her physique, how she looks like. She should just be intelligent. Yeah, most times the physique, it boils down to the physique, but Mostly, um, what, attract, what really attracts me to a woman is the intelligence and how she goes about her, doing her things. Yeah. On screen, on TV, you come off as someone who is aggressive. Would you say you are the romantic type? Really romantic. Think so? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me some of the instances that you have been romantic Whoa, to your really? girlfriend. Yes. <laughs> Man, Tell me. that would be Richard just 18. Two, just Well, or sometimes, like, when, when my girl comes for a visit, I open the door, like, the door for her. I think th those are some simple gestures that I can say on camera now. Yeah. But romantic does not mean intimacy. So if you're hiding it, like, Whoa. I don't really... No, what you so j I said to you mentioned just I one. Think you, would be, you need to be in the room to find out how romantic I am. I need to be in the room with yeah, you too. Like to to witness as a referee. <laughs> <laughs> what do you cherish most in a relationship? What's your love language? Trust. Tell me about it. Well. Trust because of how, I, like, uh, what I've seen before and, like, uh, the work that I do. Because people, like, some girls wouldn't trust you. They, they, feel, they feel that, yeah, you're a musician and musicians, there's a rumor that every musician have girls, like, plenty. So that trust won't be there. But right now, trust is a big word for me because it keeps me, it keeps me safe. Like, it keeps me, uh, it keeps you to, like, your, it keeps your mind at ease, and it, 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 most times it's the foundation of uh, all the fights that I encounter in my relationship. Most times, so trust is a big word for me now in relationship. Yeah. 
Have you dated anybody in the limelight? Have you dated a popular musician no, or please. anybody in the industry? No, please. Really? A yeah. bird told me, you were or you are or I don't know which way it is, with that girl. That girl? Yes. Whoa. The singer, the yeah, dance hall yeah. singer. What yeah, well, is the relationship between you two? That like? girl is like my sister. Because, uh, like, uh, she came to Kumase, and that's uh, like we are the foundation of her musical career. And her manager was my, like, my brother, a distant uh, family member. So that's how people have their rumors. I was like, I hosted him in Kumase, like, everywhere around in Kumase, I was with her. So that's where people got all that sort of assumptions. Should I take your word for it? Yeah, take my word for it. So where is she now? When was the last time you heard from her? Mm, around like December. Yeah, around December I heard of her. From Has her. she been here? Has she visited you? Yeah, since we came, yeah, she's been here a couple of times. So how is the fame like with regards to girls being around you? Do you get, you know, approaches and all that from ladies? You know? mm. Don't tell me no. Well, a little, but you know, it's not that much because I'm not out, out there yet. I'm not, I'm not like Stone Boy, South Korea. You otherwise. don't need to be like Stone Boy yeah, in South true, Korea. True, so I be in my lane and I don't I get that a lot. I though. saw a video of you at the Tropical Fiesta mm -hmm. show with D Black. Yeah. And I saw how the girls were all around you. Yeah. So, what are you saying? Yeah, they're around, but you know. I'm not saying you involved with yeah. them, but then, like, do you get that? Yeah, girls I get come that. To yeah, you? but it's not a lot. Like how it's assumed to be. But. Yeah, it's on the low and I take it on the low. It's not, yeah. Before, you, before we go, what comes to mind when you get um, stories or people telling you that you look like Obibini? Or you sound like, like Obibini, sorry. yeah. I think it's because of how I rap and how he raps. Yeah, like we, we, have, we have the same taste. I think that's, that's the reason. Because we love to... Uh, we love to play with the, uh, the English language and mix it up with the, our local language. So that's why people presume, say, like, I rap like him, yeah. But what's the relationship between you two, like, you and Obibini? We met two times already, and the vibe has always been great. It's, it's left that we'll be in the studio, but we haven't gotten that time yet, yeah. What are your future plans? For 2021, plans for 2021? Well, 2021, I'm going to drop Bangers. Initially, I had to drop an album this year, but because of Okoso, I'm, like, I'm, st I'm studying the terrain, and it's a, it is, it's a whole new art atmosphere on the music scene. So I'm looking forward to dropping Bangers, Bangers and the Pump Bangers, till I get a signal for me to release the album. Yeah, so that's pretty the plan for 2021. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been interesting having you and having a conversation with you. Thank you. Hope okay. to do this some other time. We wrap up here on this edition of Talk Attainment. I am your host, Elsie, and I have been talking to Kofi Jama. I come your way another time with another interesting episode. Till then, stay blessed. It's a bye. Yeah. We 
say a girl I did Yep, I say get it bigger all night long All night long Yeah, yeah